This is a lesson called Who's Hungry? And it's about consumers, producers, food chains, and food webs. So here we have a very simple food chain. For example, grass is eaten by cows, and the cows are eaten by humans. Now the important thing to know here is the names of these types of organism. Grass is a producer, whereas the cows and the humans are consumers. Now producers all have the same thing in common. They use sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide, CO2, which is why it has the COO. They, they use sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide to produce energy. Now, let's just see how they do that. Take grass. The reason grass is green is it has these green things inside it. So now we're looking very closely at the cells of grass. These green things are called chloroplasts. And they contain chlorophyll. Now this is used in photosynthesis. What happens is we have all the uh, ingredients that we talked about before. And, oh, no, too far. And so we have water and carbon dioxide. And from water and carbon dioxide, the plant is able to produce sugar and oxygen. And it does this by using the chemical inside the plant called chlorophyll and sunlight. So, it's important to remember that all life depends on photosynthesis. It depends on the producers. Because we, we need the sugar that is created in plants to be able to stay alive. So, as we looked at before, we have the grass as the producer, the cows are consumers, and the humans are consumers. So, the consumer is the consumer is an animal which requires another organism for energy. So anything but the plants which can create their own energy. So cows need plants for grass, so they are a consumer. Humans, we either need the cow for meat, or we could even need plants, not necessarily grass, but we are consumers as well. The way that we use that energy is respiration. That is turning food into energy. That is done by taking sugar and oxygen and in our cells the sugar and the oxygen are used in a chemical reaction to create water and carbon dioxide and energy. Now some creatures don't eat live uh, organisms some creatures actually eat dead organisms, and this is called decomposition, or they are called decomposers. So, the dead are turned into energy, but also what is left are smaller unused nutrients, and these unused nutrients would possibly go back into the soil or the water if it was in the sea or lake or river, and these nutrients are used by plants in photosynthesis. 
So even when things die, they are used again by producers. Now, it's also important to think about energy loss. So we take grass. Of course, grass takes its energy from the sunlight. So essentially, we are getting our energy from sunlight as well. But there is an energy loss. Every time uh, the grass grows, the cow moves, people talk or run or jump or anything, there is energy loss. And energy loss is through either heat, movement, growth, noise, speaking, communicating, and also waste. So all of these processes produce waste, okay, energy loss. Therefore, if we looked at a food pyramid, we're starting off down here with grass. Now the grass is growing. It is also respiring itself. It's using the sugars that it creates, that it produces, to grow, and also using the respi uh, respi respiring as well, it uses heat. Sorry, creates heat. So therefore, that heat is lost. That's what these arrows are here, energy loss. The fish. The fish are also, uh, they are consumers. So it takes, say, a lot of grass down here to just provide enough energy for the fish. So then there are six fish here, which are eating all of this grass, hundreds and hundreds of plants. These fish are eaten in turn by bigger fish. Notice there are only two fish here, and then these two fish would be eaten by an octopus. So every step here, what this shows is the amount of energy within the food web. It gets less and less. So we start off down here with the sun's energy, but it gets less and less and less to the top. That is why quite often, or it's very rare to have a food chain like this. It's quite rare to have a food chain with six or more levels. And those levels we actually call trophic levels. So it's rare for a food chain with six or more trophic levels. If you don't believe me, try and find one. Try and think, with, uh, think of a food chain where there are six or more. OK, so now let's look at a couple of different food chains. And we'll stick with humans again just to make it uh, easier for us to understand. So again, here we have, of course, the grass. The cows eat the grass. Humans eat the cows. Or maybe even just look at rice, OK? In this situation, we're consuming a producer. This situation again, very similar to the cows. Rabbits eat the grass, we eat the rabbit. Or even here, again, when we are consuming from a producer, an orange tree or any fruit tree, we eat that. So these are what we call food chains. Each one is a different food chain. But it's a bit it's unnecessary to have five different food chains. What we could do is just combine those. So then what we would have, well, the grass is eaten by the cow. And it's also eaten by the rabbit. The rice is eaten by the human. Rice is also eaten by the birds. And the birds could also even eat fruit trees. Cows are eaten by the humans, as are the rabbits. Also birds are, and we also eat the fruit. So it's unnecessary to show humans in every single chain if what we create is a food web. 
So the food web shows lots of different connections between the organisms. So therefore, combining a number of different food chains, we get a food web. Combination of food chains. So don't forget, a food chain will always start with a producer. This of course means that if that producer were to disappear, well, let's imagine, if there was no more grass, there would be no more cows. Now does that mean there'd be no more humans? Well, not necessarily, because of course, we get our nutrition from a variety of areas. Now, if there was no more grass, there were no more cows, well, we'd still have algae, we'd still have fish. We could eat fish. There'd still be some grains. Now, grains are a type of grass, but maybe some grains have survived. We eat grains. We eat rice. Chickens also eat grains. We eat chickens. And there'd still be fruit trees. So there is an advantage of eating from more than one food source. That is why humans are so successful, because we have managed to find food in so many different places. And that wraps up this lecture. Okay? So hopefully, if we scroll back up to the top, you should be able to recognize and explain all of this vocabulary here. Carnivore, photosynthesis, consumer, herbivore, producer, food web, food chain, respiration, and omnivore. Now, actually, I've just noticed these words I haven't talked about yet. I'll explain these quickly. Carnivore eats only meat. Herbivore eats only plants. Omnivore eats both. Which are again uh, just a quick extra piece of information. Takes us to the idea of let's look at say we have grass, we have deer, and we have a tiger. Well again this is a producer Consumer, consumer, and uh, it's also important to remember to, to know that this is a first order consumer. This would be then a second order consumer. And there's also another name we can describe these uh, organisms with. Of course, a deer we can call prey, and the tiger is predator because the tiger hunts the deer. The deer tries to escape from the tiger. Okay, that is definitely it.